So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a little time going back and reviewing. <clears throat> okay, go ahead, go ahead. For sure, go ahead. I know it's off the weekend. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, so, what I'm going to go through is we have y equals tangent of pi x divided by four. And what I want to do is just kind of go back through what exactly we usually look on for every one of our trig graphs. So the first thing we'd always find, remember, was amplitude. It's all part of just uh, being in. Some people are gone for a weekend, want to make sure. But I want to make sure you guys all have this written down. The amplitude, the period, the x scale, start and the end. That's what we did for every single graph. Every single one of our graphs. It didn't matter what the trig function was, we applied this. So you should know how to do this for every single one of your trig functions. And that's what you should first do before you even try to, oops, before you even try to graph anything or do anything, you need to be figuring out these, this information. Now the amplitude, remember, was the max or the, the half the distance between the max and the minimum point. Well, if you looked at the parent graph of tangent and cotangent, what we notice is those graphs go infinitely up and infinitely down. So for this one to find amplitude, we don't need to worry about an amplitude because there's not going to be an amplitude. So amplitude is going to be pretty basic for us on tangent and cotangent graphs. So there's always no amplitude. There's no, not going to be an amplitude because it's infinite distance between the max and the because the max and the min are infinite. But now, here's our little bit of difference. So if you guys remember, um, for sine and cosine and their reciprocal identities, we always took uh, b divided by, or sorry, 2 pi and divided by b, correct? Now, for tangent and cotangent, all it's going to be is pi divided by b. So in this case, remember our b is pi, right? Because b is your coefficient of your x. But our pi is being divided by 4. So now we have pi divided by pi divided by 4, which is just going to equal 4 when you go ahead and do the math. Do you want me to do the math? OK. Pi divided by pi divided by 4. To get the fraction off the bottom, I multiply by the reciprocal. So we know that a number multiplied by a reciprocal, that always goes to 1, or that multiplies to 1. And then pi times 4 divided by pi, our pi's are going to divide out into 1. So therefore, I'm only going to left with a 4, a 4 being divided by 1, which is just 4. So then we look at our x scale. Now remember, our x scale, what I did was I took our period, and we divided it by 4. Right? Yeah, the critical points that our x scale. Remember, we took our points because we had maximum, we had minimums, we had x-intercepts. So we took whatever our period was, and we had to divide it by 4. However, for our tangent and cotangent, we don't have four critical points. All we're going to have is 2. So I'm just going to take my period and divide it by 2. So now my x scale is going to be 2. Okay. Then we need to look at our start and our end. Previously, we had the start was at 0. And then we ended it at 2 pi. That was the parent graph for sine and cosine. Well, now the parent graph for tangent for our initial period is going to start at um, uh, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So again, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take whatever's inside of your function and set it equal to those two endpoints. So I have pi x divided by 4, and I'll have pi x divided by 4 equals pi halves. So again, we need to solve for x in each one of these cases. So to solve for x, the first thing I want to do is get rid of my fractions. right? You set them both equal to pi over 2 and a positive pi halves. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of my 4. So I multiply by 4 on both sides. Therefore, I have pi x equals a negative pi divided by pi divide by pi, and then x equals negative 1. Over here, I multiply by 4, and I get pi x equals 2 pi, divide by pi, divide by pi, x equals 2. 1, that's, yes? I'm confused how it works, because it's 
That's 2 pi. Thank you. Thank you. Negative 2. I was wondering about that. I'm like, that doesn't equal. Well, it's, it's an easy question because you could say from negative 1 to 2 is not a distance of 4 because that's your period, right? So our, our period is 4. So therefore, the distance between your start and your end has to be 4, which you can say from negative 2 to 2 would be 4. OK, so that's what we look like. That's what we're going for right there is we have our start, we have the end, we have our period, and we have our x scale. So let's go and take a look at what our tangent graph is going to look like. So the same thing, we're going to kind of start with the x-axis. And then we'll start with the end, which will be at negative 2. All right, And then we'll go to our end is at 2. Now the important thing you need to understand about the start and the ending period of a tangent graph is those are going to be asymptotes like secant and tangent. And in the other video, I showed you why they become asymptotes if you were to plug them into your function. But our start and our end are going to be our asymptotes, where this is your y-axis, because that's when x equals 0. So we're going to have intercepts, or I'm sorry, asymptotes. All right. And then the x scale is 2. So that means that over 2, I'm going to have another important point. Right? And that important point is actually going to be our intercept, our x-intercept. Now, there's one more step we can go through. And we actually could do our still our x scale as doing it by fours. And then what you can do is actually plug in and evaluate what each one of these, what these points are for at um, this point and this point. I'm not going to require you guys to do that for right now. I just want to make sure we have the, the main important things as far as the x-intercept. However, as far as the graph, if it's going to be um, the dilation of the graph, will be affected by what you're evaluating with these two points. So you could keep your x scale into 4 and then find those values. But I'm really not too concerned about you guys finding what, how the graph is shaped. You guys can use your calculators to kind of see if the graph is going to be skinnier or wider. But the main important thing you guys need to know about the tangent graph is that the parent graph falls to the left and then rises to the right. All right. Now, there's many different shapes. This could be what we call skinnier. It could be wider. But we'll take a look at that, and we'll use our calculator um, to help us divide that. The other way you could find that out is plug in these values and see exactly what the y value would be, and that will help you form the graph as well. But for right there, that's just one initial period. So to find our next initial periods, we know we can go an extra four more units over. So I go three, four, five. 6, and then create another asymptote at 2 over. I'm sorry? Just two periods. But I'm, I'll do 3 because I'll do it in both directions. Negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. And then there's my center set. OK. And there you go. That's your tangent graph. Got it? Cool. Any questions? Nothing? No?